For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's plain and simple what the Bible says. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There's no good intentions of getting to heaven. We're all going to die. And many have, oh, I'm going to go to heaven. And they don't even know how to get to heaven. And you can't name it and proclaim it from the Bible. You can't say, oh, I'm going to do, and it will happen. Because Jesus, God manifested in the flesh, and who is God, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, Almighty God, but by me. So when Jesus said, He is the way, and you're going to try to get to heaven, not by Jesus. You're not going. And without Jesus Christ, you will go to a place called hell. Now, I know many churches don't preach about repentance and hell and all that, and they're wrong. Because even our Lord Jesus Christ preached about heaven and preached more about hell. Jesus says in the, in the gospel, look, I come to seek them that are lost. And the moment you get saved, you are found by God. And your sins are lost. And without Jesus Christ, you are lost. And your sins are present. And you need the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You cannot put your faith in a religion. You can't even put your faith in going to church. A baptism is not going to wash away your sins. Being good, doing good things, giving to charity, being a nice person won't get you to heaven. Let me tell you about hell. Hell is full of religion. Hell's occupants went to church. People in hell have given money to charity. People in hell are good. People in hell have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the difference. For God so loved the world that he gave this charity, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now God, according to the scriptures, has given the means for a man to go to heaven. His gift. And his gift is Jesus Christ. Because we're going to die, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We're very good at dying. We are born to die. That's it. We can make all the accomplishments we want in this world while living. We can achieve any ladder of success, but we're born to die. And after death, the Bible says, the judgment. And no, you will not die and just sleep all eternity. You will not die and just that's it, you're gone forever, nothing to worry about. In the Bible, there is an afterlife and there's only two. There is heaven by Jesus Christ. And there is hell without Jesus. And my advice to you.
you, though I cannot threaten you, I cannot force you, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Saved from what? Hell. Hell. Because if we can earn heaven by what we do, there would be no story of Jesus Christ. There would be no need for Jesus to leave the heavenly throne. If we can do it ourselves. Because Jesus would not have to suffer and die according to the scriptures. Jesus would not need to be buried. And Jesus Christ would not have to be resurrected from the dead if you and I are able to save our souls. It's that simple. It's the glory of God that Jesus Christ, the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. If we can earn it, why did Jesus die? We're going to die. The wages of sin is death. But we're sinners. We need the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Heaven is not reached. Heaven is not attainable by I'm going to heaven. That's not going to work. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with the heart man believes of the righteousness. With the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Behold the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. And you're not that Lamb. You're a goat. And goats don't go to heaven. Jesus said, I'll separate one day from the sheep from the goats. The sheep go into life because Jesus says, I'm the shepherd of the sheep. Jesus has sheep. He has other sheep. And without Jesus Christ, you are you don't have a shepherd. You're a goat. And many of you, Billy goes out there, butt in the preacher, butt in the preacher, my preacher, but preacher, but preacher, my priest, my priest, my church, my church, my church, my baptism. You can butt all you want. There is no life in a goat. You got to be a dumb sheep. You got to have the shepherd, the chief shepherd. The shepherd gave his life for the sheep, which is well pleasing for the father. Jesus said, I am the door. Religion is a door that is locked. I don't care if you're a Baptist, I don't care if you're Catholic, I don't care if you're Presbyterian, I don't care what, what kind of realm of a cult or whatever you are in. That door is locked to heaven. Because Jesus said, I am the way, and Jesus is not a religion. Now you also must be careful. Because the Bible says to us that there's another Jesus out there. You have got to have the biblical Jesus. And without the biblical Jesus that was born of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Judah, of a virgin named Mary, who is God manifested in the flesh, who suffered and died according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, who was sinless, perfection, God manifest in the flesh, God himself, who left the heavenly throne, came down here, that man may have eternal life. That is the biblical Jesus. Now let me tell you, a Jesus that you line up to put in your mouth is not a biblical Jesus. It is the devil. That's 
called cannibalism. In other words, it's the mass. Jesus never said in the scriptures to eat him literally. He said, flesh and blood profit nothing but my words. And then there are people there who have a Jesus who has not obtained the, the merit of God himself. He's a good little guy. He, he's nice. He's, he's a prophet, but he's not God and you're wrong. Because Thomas said to Jesus, the resurrected body, my God, my Savior. And if you were to go quote that to the Jehovah Witnesses, their head would spin around. They wouldn't realize that one of Jesus' disciples proclaimed Jesus as God and Jesus never rebuked him. Behold the man, Christ Jesus. There's no other man. You know, you say, preacher, Mary will get me through. Good old Mary, queen of heaven. And the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. The mediator of God is the man. Mary is not a man. She does not fit the mediation of God and man. Now you can be really stupid. Oh, I don't know what the male and female body is. <laughs> Go ahead and be stupid. But without the Lord Jesus Christ, you could be in stupid in hell for all eternity. And there are people in hell today who have believed greatly and wonderfully better than Christians in religion. There are people who have done things for their religion and God does not honor it because Jesus has already done what God has prescribed. He suffered and died according to the scriptures. Giving money to charity is not scriptural for salvation. He was buried. Going to church is fine, but going to church is not going to put you in heaven. That's not scriptural. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Being good is not scriptural. Because if you want to look at the scriptures and being good, the Bible says there is none that doeth good. Well, God, I've done good. My Bible says you haven't done good. Now you got a problem. You got a major problem. You are at odds with God. And you're going to think that you're going to outwit God. That's a fool. And speaking about fools, let's go to the one that says, oh, there is no God. I'm an atheist. And the Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there's no God. The Bible answers you. And when you stand up before God that you don't believe in one day, he's going to call you a fool. I didn't believe in you. You're a fool. When the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. That's a capital G-O-D. That's not a small G-O-D-S. We have a God that is the creator. You have gods that have been created by the devil and by man. Our God in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood that you may have life. Nowhere does God in his holy scriptures tell you to go out and kill people to go to heaven. That's a lie. Now God told Israel, go in the land and slay those people because that's your land. And they sinned against me, but that was not Israel's salvation. That was Israel's land deed. Land grant. The Christian in this side of Calvary 
up to the rapture has never been told by God through the scriptures, go and kill people in the name of Allah or whatever you want to call that fool. Because my God, my Savior, shed his blood that we might be saved. By the precious blood of the Lamb without spot, Peter says. And if you slay someone, if you kill somebody, whatever it is, if your intent to kill is called murder, and the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. So in the name of religion, I'm going to kill you, but you defile the scriptures. And when I preach what the Bible tells me to preach, go in all the world and preach the gospel, here's what it is. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and he was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scripture don't kill anybody just tell them and God will use the Holy Spirit in your heart to work righteousness if you want to believe and we're not even going to force you we will not force you to be saved. God's not going to force you to be saved. The free will of God. God gives you the choice. He ain't going to make the choice for you. Is that a wonderful God? If you do not want to go to heaven, God's not going to force you. But he's going to put a preacher. He's going to put his word. He's going to put his doctrine. He's going to put his gospel in your way. But you can turn away. <laughs> when you go to hell you go to hell because you wanted to not because of God and if you are to die without Jesus at the mouth of a loud mouth preacher in Daytona Beach Florida if you die and go to hell it is your fault God has sent the preacher to you with the gospel you're the fool to go to hell and we preach that you might not go to hell. Salvation is of God through Jesus Christ alone. Nothing else can save your soul. Only Jesus saves. God has prepared a place for those that believe on Jesus. Jesus goes so far to say there's a mansion. If you're to believe on the name and the being of God, Jesus Christ. If you come to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, and all have sinned, we're all sinners. You know, the Bible says all you got to do is think about sinning. Let's take a horrible, wicked sin. Jesus said in Mac, Matthew chapter 5, I think it's 23, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery with her. Man, Daytona Beach in the summer. It gets those eyes going to men. Now you don't need to sleep with that woman. You just have to look. Now if Jesus says adultery is by thinking and by looking, what about the other crimes? Well, preacher, I never robbed a bank, but did you think about it? Have you ever thought about robbing somebody or something? Now, you may not go into a courtroom and have a judge say you're guilty of a crime by thinking about a crime, but God will. God will. Just your very thoughts. How about your words? Jesus said again in Matthew, every idle word shall man give an account. How are you doing with your words? When your words do not honor God and Jesus, they're idle talk. Stupid jokes. Stupid sports. Stupid news is idle talk. 
and you will be held accountable unless you come to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You want to get rid of those sinful thoughts and those sinful words? Come to the Lamb and be washed. Put your faith and trust and repent of your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, preacher, I'm not that bad. How were you with your parents? How did you treat your parents? When the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, you don't know. There's no clause. How did you honor your parents? I don't care how your parents were. God doesn't care how your parents are. God doesn't take excuses. How did you honor your parents? And if you didn't honor your parents at least once, you are a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That one time you wish your parents were gone. That one time you wish you had other parents. That one time that you got mad because you were punished. That other time that your parents told you not to do something and you grumbled and complained. You are a sinner. Honor thy mother and father. I don't need to get into the gross, put someone in jail kind of uh, crimes and sins. Have you ever stolen something? Now let me give you the biblical definition of stealing. You have taken something without someone's, without someone's per permission that owned that item. Let me give you a great idea of stealing something. Have you ever taken a pen that wasn't yours? Did you ask for it? No, you are a thief. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, the Bible says thieves will have their part in the lake that burns forever. If you had taken something from your employer and you thought, well, my employer doesn't really need it, he's really rich, you are a thief. How about finders, keepers, losers, weepers? The Bible says if you find something, that's not yours. You are to find the owner thereof. And to return it. Because you find something doesn't make it yours. And if you make it yours, you're a thief. You're a sinner. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Have you ever told a lie? Now listen, I'm not looking at vicious crimes. Am I? I'm just looking at... Plain, basic sins that every human does. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever gotten the phone to your boss and say, Boss, I'm not feeling good today? And you, you know, it's not true. You lied. You have lied before God and you are a sinner. And you must repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I mean, I haven't talked about deceiving. Have you ever deceived anybody, any way, such how? Have you ever told someone you loved them and didn't? Well, that's a lie. That's deceit. That's a sin. And you need to be cleansed of your sins. God says, come now, let us reason, to, reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Who said that? God said that. Who can cleanse you? The lamb. The lamb is not your priest. The lamb is not your pastor. The lamb is not whoever you follow. And that lamb is sure not Democrat, and that lamb is sure not Republican. That lamb is sure not Republican, that lamb is sure not Democrat. I want to put it both ways for you. The government cannot save you. All the government can do is make more of a mess of this world. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. It don't get better. It gets worse. That defiles evolution. We're not getting better. Look at yourself in the mirror. You are not getting better. This country is not getting better. This world is not getting better.
And yet evolution, the lie of Satan in science and classroom and public schools, says that we're all getting better through... I don't even know what they call it. And yet it's plain and simple to see that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And that God who created us, and that God that loves us, he says, for God, that's the creator, so loved the world, that's his creation, that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus, that whosoever, that you believe on him, shall not perish into the lake of fire, but has eternal life. Now, eternal life is in what God gave, and what God gave is Jesus. God didn't give you a church building. Man did. And the bank did. Well, what, what do you say, preacher, is what makes, you know, your Jesus different from my Jesus? Aren't all religions? And I can answer this with the empty tomb. The Bible says for born-again, Bible-believing Christians, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Your religion has not come out of the graveyard. That's the difference between religion and Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, came out of that graveyard, was seen over above 450 people after he was buried. There are people that make pilgrimage, pilgrimages to, to their dead fallen leaders. It's a, still a dead body. It's a dead grave that hasn't been moved. My God, my Savior, came out of the grave alive and well and showed himself. Your religion is dead. Jesus Christ is alive and well, seated at the right hand of the Father right now. And he will come and meet with you if you want to get right and you want to get saved. He'll come and meet you. The same God that says, I have all your hairs on your head numbered. I feed the fish. I attend the funeral of the birds. I will come down and save your soul if you repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It's that simple. Religion doesn't do that. I grew up in a religion. And you know what they say? Cash, check, or money order. Bring your money. That's what religion says. Jesus said... Come, bring your sins and repent. I have never asked money here. I have never taken the money and, and, and say, hey, give me money, give me money. Here's my toll-free number. I've never said that. I've always said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I don't have a hat. I don't have a bucket. I don't have a pan. Keep your money. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now the devil over there will have a hat for money and a bucket for money. But Jesus said, my salvation is free. Keep it in your pocket. Bring out your sins. Open the closet door and put them under the blood of God through Jesus Christ and be saved. Drugs and alcohol cost money. Jesus Christ doesn't. Drugs and alcohol last for a very short time. Jesus said, all eternity. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Come and taste of me and thou shalt live forever. Jesus said, I am the water of life. And a man that drinks of the water of life will never thirst again. I gave up the alcohol in 1990. I gave up the, uh, the, the cigarettes in the uh, 1990s. And I turned to Jesus Christ on April 21st, 1987. 
I had not ever sought a religion. I have felt complete. I have been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am cleansed. I am a child of God. i got the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. I know where I'm going to go when I die. How you doing? How you doing? Do you think you're going to heaven or do you know you're going to heaven? The Bible says these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. And that eternal life is in the Son. And the Son is Jesus Christ, who is also God. Heaven's a wonderful, great place to go. Let me tell you about heaven. Heaven's a place where you will get a brand new body. How's your body doing? If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt get a brand new body. That will never age, never sin, you'll never die again. You'll never sin, you will never be involved in unholiness. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and go to glory, get a brand new body. When we get to glory, New Jerusalem, the Bible says that in Revelation chapter 21, He will wipe away our tears and there will be no more tears. Have you not shed tears? Have you not cried? You won't do that in heaven. You will never hear the word ouch again. You will not need Tylenol. Your pharmacist may go to heaven, but he ain't going to prescribe anything for you. Won't be needed. If your doctor's saved and in heaven, you, you won't need to go and see him for checkups. You'll be rejoicing together in the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There'll be jobs in heaven that won't, uh, there'll be jobs on earth that won't be needed in heaven. There'll be no hospitals in heaven. There'll be no undertaking in heaven. There are no graveyards in heaven. There's no devil in heaven. I mean New Jerusalem. There's no more pain and sorrow and glory. There's no more saying goodbye forever in glory. There's no more sin. There's no more battles, no more wars. The greatest health care is offered by Jesus Christ when we get to glory. You will have no need of health care. There will be no health problems. Cancer is answered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ when we get to glory. When we get to glory, no more cancer. When we get to glory through Jesus Christ, imagine being able to say whatever you want to say without checking yourself and it will be always right that whatever we do in glory will be always right. There's no offending in glory. Everything will be holy and righteous when we get to glory. And to get all that is to get the Lord Jesus Christ to repent of your sins, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You're not going to get that if you refuse Jesus. I'll tell you what you get in hell. In hell, the Bible says you get torment. You know, there's no tears in hell either. And that rich man said, oh, if I could just have a little drop of water to cool my tongue. If you could cry in hell, you would take those tears and, and cool your tongue. But you won't have no cooling. You will have no tears. You will have no relief. And if your pharmacist is in hell with you, he ain't going to give you no drugs. You can't have alcohol in hell. Alcohol burns hell fire. Duh. The party in hell has been canceled because of the fire. The hell is spoken as a dark place. You are not going to see your friends. And your friends are not going to want to see you. Hell is a place where somebody says, I don't care about you. 
myself, the rich man. In hell, you get no Bible, you get no Bible preaching. You also don't get God in his mercy. There's no mercy in hell. There's no grace in hell. There's no love in hell. There's no little children in hell. There's no laughter in hell. Now, I don't know if we're going to laugh in heaven. I, I don't know, but I know there's no laughter in hell. There is screaming and agony and torment for all eternity. Because you do not want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It's your fault. God is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. He said, man, you get out of that bed, you get dressed, you go out to the farmer's market, and you preach the gospel. I know they don't like it. I know they hate you. I know they rejected me. I told you the scriptures, marvel not if the world hates you. Go and preach the gospel. That's what the Bible says. God wants you to believe on his son, to put all faith in his son, and that's it, nothing else. Now you go to church after you're saved, a Bible-believing King James church to grow in the Lord. But that's not going to save your soul. Church doesn't get you to heaven. Church gets you more rewards. Church gets you a better relationship with God. Church will get you to grow in the Lord as a Christian. It won't save you. You're not going to walk up to God and say, Denomination, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You're not going to walk up to God and say, I was baptized in a river, I was baptized in the ocean, I was baptized in a lake, I was baptized in a kiddie pool. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh God the Father, I come here by the mercy and the grace of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shed your blood, his blood, upon Calvary's cross, and all my all and all my repentance is upon Jesus Christ, which still I am a failure. There's absolutely nothing I can do but by your Son. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. What a difference. Depart from me, or well done. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between going to heaven and going to hell. And when you reach either place, you don't come out. You can't go to hell and say, well, let me come back and trust Christ and come back. That don't happen. You don't get a do-over. Life is not a video game. You take God by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You're not going to go to hell and see hell, okay, now I believe. That ain't going to work. That's not going to work. That's not faith. And when you get to Jesus Christ by glory, oh, you're going to say, oh, if I only done more. If I only believe more, if I only put more, I didn't give it enough. When God through Jesus Christ gave it all. Listen, we've been here as a family for five years now. It's the same message, it's the same name, Jesus Christ. It's the same two places, heaven or hell. It don't change. Now, churches change it, but it don't change. Many of you don't even know who I am and what my name is, but you know the name of Jesus. 
Because the Bible says there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That, saved. that name is not my name. It's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people take the name of Jesus in vain. They use Jesus Christ as a cuss. Why did they take a holy and righteous name and cuss that name? Because it's holy and righteous. I have never heard anybody say Allah damn it. Because Allah has no power. There's no hope in the Pope. But Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. The glorious hope. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh, seated at the right hand of the Father right now, willing for you to come and repent of your sins and to believe on Him for salvation. And to repent of your sins is to be sorry for your sin and to be upset about your sin. Not bragging about them. God's glory is not you. God's glory is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the truth. You know, God cannot, will not, and is unable to tell a lie. People say, is there anything that God cannot do? He cannot lie. He also cannot remember your sins under the blood. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When the sins are under the blood, they are forgotten by God. As far as the east is from the west. You know, you could forgive somebody, honestly forgive somebody, but you may not forget. It's hard for humans to forget. But under the blood of Jesus Christ, God is able to forget your sins under the blood. It has to be the blood. It's not water. It's not attendance. It's not goodness. Jesus Christ is God's goodness. And only Jesus Christ. Only by Jesus Christ are you saved. Hey. You ready? Oh, okay, we're down here right now. We'll, we'll head up there. Love you. Love you. It's by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that we're able to be saved. And if you're not trusted in Jesus Christ, you're not saved. Do not think you're going to heaven without Jesus. You're not. If what you're trusting in is not Jesus Christ, you are not going to heaven. You're going to hell. And listen to the preacher. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Repent of your sins. Turn or burn is what they used to say in the old days. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 